Good morning. You're watching PA Harness Week Racing's fastest paced half hour. Well, it's sad but true. This is our last show of the season, but we are celebrating a pretty big milestone today. This is our 300th episode. Time flies when you're having fun. I'm Charlotte McBride, joined by Heather Vitale. I'm really excited about this today. Actually, it's bittersweet, right? Because our season is ending, but we will be back next year. But we've got lots of foiled again stuff on today's show and plenty of action. That's right, we have a lot going on on this week's show. Here's what you can expect to see in this next half hour. On today's show, we have an amazing race to show you that if you had the winner, you could be rich. And we found a race where the winner has some championship jeans in his background. Plus, we check out the Liberty Bell series of races from right here at Harris Philadelphia. And did you know that there are many different types of bridles? We'll tell you all about it in our 411 segment. And that's all coming your way next on Racing's Fastest Pace Half Hour. We kick off this week's show with an OMG moment that really tops all of the races and it tops some bank accounts. It's from the downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. The favorite in this race was living on the beach, but wait until you see the results. Gaining now a little separation. College Hanover, good first over move now for Drew Chellis. Pocket seat still belongs to our surprise. Then two and a half back to love the action. Take the money and run passing him for fourth. Character Art now into sixth, just to his inside Kaboom Pow. Still nothing on the front on uh, from the favored living on the beach and way back to Bay Meadows. Three quarters reached 125 and two, 28 and four. Third panel as Tashiki holding off College Hanover, who's still just a head back and fighting hard here. Pocket seat for our surprise, and now a second over into striking position comes. Take the money and run. Top of the stretch, they're bunching up behind Dashiki, who's trying to get away. On the inside comes our surprise. College Hanover takes over the lead. Late move, take the money and run. College Hanover trying to get there. Take the money and run. College Hanover, 99 to 1. Announcer Jim Bavilia says, what's going on here? I know, right? Well, I'll tell you one thing going on. There were a lot of happy fans who had number one on their ticket to win. It's College Hanover with driver Drew Chellis. They pay $336.60 to win. Now, anything can happen on a sloppy track. And also, this is this horse's first lifetime win. <laughs> Amazing, right? So if that is not an OMG moment, I don't know what is. And we have quite a few big payouts coming up later in this week's show. Now heading into our race of the week from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. It was race 13, the favorite in this one, Hall Bro. New leader sportsmanship, three quarters, 124 and four, 28 and one third panel. As soon as sportsmanship gets the lead, Bondi Hanover is ready to pounce. Falling up on the outside now, Western Bayama as the Hall Bro drops back to fourth. Top of the stretch, Bondi Hanover going at it now with sportsmanship. In behind that, Western Bayama. It's Bondi Hanover, slight lead over sportsmanship, still fighting hard, but Bondi Hanover going to roll on past that 15 to one for Anthony. Napolitano. Bondi Hanover and driver Anthony Napolitano win in 153 and 3. And not only do they pay $30 to win, that's a big deal, right? But I am totally digging the family tree on this horse. <laughs> the dad, the sire, is some beach somewhere. He was 2008 horse of the year. Not only that, though, his mom, aka his dam, is Bunny Lake. She was 2001 horse of the year. So let me just tell you, there's only been four pacing mares in all of the history of harness racing that have been horse of the year. So we've got Bunny Lake, Fan Hanover, Rainbow Blue, and JK She's a Lady. So it's kind of wild to have a horse who has two horses of the year as their parents. Well, we've seen quite a few eye-catching races from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, so why not catch up with a familiar face of the Downs? It's driver Mike Simons. We're here with driver trainer Mike Simon. Mike, we want to get to know you today. What got you started in the sport of harness racing? Uh, probably the fact that I was born and raised in Lexington, Kentucky, and it's, it is horse country, and one thing led to another. One thing led to another. So what happened? Did you just show up at a track one day? Uh, no, basically, uh, the Red Mile's located pretty close to my house. I got a job there, just working in the back stretch, and like I said, it all, it all added up. Did you always have an interest in driving? In driving, no, actually, uh, okay. I didn't. I uh, wanted to be a caretaker first, and then a trainer, and, and things came up uh, earlier in my life. Uh, I was in the junior driver 
competition and uh, I did all right in that and so then I then I developed an interest in driving. So how many years ago was that? Uh, my math's not that good. <laughs> it's probably uh, close to 40 years. 40 years you've been doing this and you mentioned that you loved being a caretaker and, and trainer first and foremost so you gotta love the horses. What is it about these animals that you love so much? Hard to explain but uh, it's a good feeling every morning to walk into your barn and see all their heads out and know they're happy to see you and uh, like I always say, it sure beats working. I mean, uh, you can be there all day. Sometimes it's tiring, but it is rewarding. What is so rewarding about it? What is so rewarding about being around these animals? A feeling of accomplishment, winning a race, um, taking a horse and have them improve, uh, taking a sore horse, making them more sounder, uh, just, you know, achieving goals. 40 years in this business. Are you going to do this for 40 more? If I could, I would. If I could, I would. Perfect. Thanks so much for talking with us. Yes, ma'am. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll check out the races from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. We'll also check out the Liberty Bell series, and we'll give you the 411 on bridles. It's all coming up right here on PA Harness Week. Larry Carr engaged by quick talking. Rubs up the sticks and nose in front. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer, and you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. The world is full of compromises, but not here. Not on this day, not in this race, not in this sport. Every bet is a hope. Return on investment comes in seconds. This is Harness Racing. We welcome you to the Harness Racing Fan Zone. See it all for yourself. Feel it in all the passion. Share that experience with others. The Harness Racing Fan Zone puts you in the driver's seat. The excitement is back. Breeders' Crown. America's six million dollar championships return to the downs at Mohegan Sun, Pocono, where racing's greatest champions are crowned on one unforgettable night. And a brand new chapter in racing history is written. Breeders' Crown, Saturday, October 27th. The journey, the pursuit of greatness, all comes down to this. PA Harness Week. Well, we showed you some big races with some big payouts. And if you're sitting at home wondering how you can get a chunk of that change, here's a look at the live racing schedule for this week. The Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono has exciting live harness racing this week on Saturday, Sunday, and Tuesday. Each evening, the post time is at 7 p.m. And right here at Harris, Philadelphia, there is Sunday racing with a post time of 2.05 this week. Then on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, the first race post time is at 12.25. All right, let's get back to racing and the seven races in the Liberty Bell series from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. Yeah, so we've got three-year-old Colt and Geldings, both trotters and pacers. All the purses are $30,000 each. First, let's start with the pacers. <laughs> All right, and the favorite in this one is Quick Talkin'. Larry Carr engaged by Quick Talkin', who moves up the sticks to nose in front, nearing three quarters. Outside, some bad dude continues to milk that live cover. Wild Bill starts to look for a way out fourth. I love to make money fifth into fourth. Three quarters on the board, 125. New leader, Quick Talkin'. Outside, some bad dude moves up. Larry Carr tries to re-engage third. I love to make money fourth. Wild Bill, a helpless shuffle. Outside, Heartbeat Hill moves up as Wild Bill angles off the pylons as they straighten away. Quick talking, trying to sustain. Some bad dudes alongside. I love to make money with upset hopes. Wild Bill's trying to thread the needle. Mid stretch, quick talking. Here comes I love to make money. Outside, some bad dudes. Some bad dude, I love to make money, baby. I love to make money appropriately named for this one because he pays over $50 to win. He makes a big move with new driver on the scene, Mr. Down Under. That's Dexter <laughs> Dunn. They win in 153 and 1. Some Bad Dude was second and Wild Bill took third. 
Terror at the beach by one. Winston looks for racing room second. In race number three, the three year old Colton Geldings Pacers Division two of four. The favorite is Terror at the beach, but it's Winston winning in this one with driver Corey Callahan. He's got a good trip in one and one fifty three. Finishing second is Go West Go Fast. Just not fast enough in this one. As they stripe the way for the stretch drive, Mackle Doodle Doo by one. In the third division for these sophomore Pacers, the favorite was Macka Doodle Doo, but he had to settle for second as a wheel. On fire, got a pocket journey to pull off a win by half a length with Matt Kikaley in 152 and 1 for the country's leading trainer, Ron Burke. Rounding out the trifecta in here was Shadow Cat. They straighten the way for the stretch drive. The inside Hayden Hanover looking to put away JK Wildfire. And in race 13, the three year old Colton Geldings Pacers Division 4 of 4. The favorite is Hayden Hanover, driven by Andy Miller. And this time it is Hayden Hanover pulling out the victory in 151 and 1. And we'll have much more from the Liberty Bell series and Trotters later in the show. Well, you know, Charlotte, I had a little bridal party with <laughs> trainer driver Tom Jackson recently. Okay, well, bridal, B-R-I-D-L-E. That's oh, what I'm okay. talking about. Uh, horses wear different bridles for different reasons. And we got the 411 with Tom Jackson. All right, Tom, we're going to have a crash course on bridles here. Let's start out simple. What kind of bridle is this and what is it used for? This is an open bridle. Uh, most of the time horses that wear an open bridle, they're a little excitable. They're hard to handle. The more they can see, the more they relax. And uh, also they can see horses coming at them so they can fight them. So now we've got the open. Let's go to obviously the next logical one would be the closed bridle. Closed bridle, also known as a blind bridle. It keeps them a little more focused, keeps their attention in front of them instead of side to side or somewhere else. And uh, sometimes when they can't see a horse but they can hear them coming, it'll get them on a bit a little bit more. Since these two are the most popular, which is most popular? The blind or the um, open? When I was a kid, I would have said the blind, but I see more racing open now. Okay. Now we've got kind of a quasi blind bridle. <laughs> this is a what kind? This is a can't see back. and. Uh, some bridles, uh, like the open bridle, you can put cheek pieces, which are sheepskin rolls on the side, does about the same thing. And it gives them a little more vision than the blind bridle, but not quite as much as an open bridle. Now we're going to get a little more technical here, and we've got the telescope or peekaboo? Telescope or peekaboo. And that, uh, a lot of times when horses really don't want to do their work and they're looking for some way to come off the track and things like that, this is what you want to go to. And it'll really keep them more focused and directly in front of them. I know a few human men I would like to put the uh, telescope or peekaboo on. Now, finally, this is the doozy here. All right, this is uh, all kinds of things happening with this. What kind of bridle? It's a flip down bridle. It, it enables you in the middle of the race or towards the end of the race, if you want, you can go from open to closed. And uh, if they've got ear earplugs and gating poles and this, it gets quite confusing sometimes. <laughs> and the cool thing about this bridle is to go from open to close, or you can go from yes. close to open either way, either is way. by using the strings. So the strings connect, and then you open them from the sulky? Yes. The string runs back to the race bike, and uh, usually you do it by your foot. But uh, you can pull them closed, or if you attach the string to the top, you can pull them open. And it gives you the best of both worlds. All right. Thank you, Tom. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Coming up later in the show, we're going to talk a lot about the Breeders' Crown, which, of course, is coming up in October at the Downtown Mohegan Sun Pocono. So to get us in the mood, Heather has a little trivia question for us. What driver has the most wins in Breeders' Crown history? It's a very good question. We do have to take a quick break, but coming up, we'll give you, of course, the answer to that question. We're going to show you an interesting blast from the past and much more from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. And Captain Treacherous, he looms the danger perfectly positioned second over. The excitement is back. Breeders' Crown. America's six million dollar championships return to the downs at Mohegan Sun, Pocono, where racing's greatest champions are crowned on one unforgettable night. And a brand new chapter in racing history is written. Breeders' Crown, Saturday, October 27th. The journey, the pursuit of greatness, all comes down to this. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier. And the slots, a little hotter. 
When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back. You're watching PA Harness Week, racing's fastest paced half hour. Before the break, Heather had a little trivia question for us, and now she's got the answer. Which driver has the most wins in Breeders' Crown history? It is John Campbell. No surprise there. Right, exactly. <laughs> now he has a 48 wins, and it's 18 more than the second guy in line. We're going to now get back to racing in the Liberty Bell series from right here at Harris, Philadelphia. This is race number eight. What's the word is the favorite? Max's beast by one. Shiraka Rob has sat this pocket throughout. Mississippi Storm is third. Richard Miserable trying to hone it on that top trio. Now Mississippi Storm drives out of third as they round the turn. Max's beast by one. Mississippi Storm bears down. Three quarters, 126 and one. Shiraka Rob is third. Richard Miserable is guided to the outside fourth. Top of the stretch. Max's beast. Mississippi Storm moves up now to stick the nose in front as they straighten away. Mississippi Storm now takes the lead. Max's beast could not fight on. Up the inside, Chiraco Rob, rich and miserable out wide. Then it's Mississippi Storm. Mississippi Storm. Well, we're not in Mississippi, but with the weather on Sunday, mm -hmm. if you wanted to go with the word storm and make a hunch bet, then you ended up a winner in here. The horse ends up winning in 154 over a sloppy track for trainer Tom Fanning and driver Tim Tietrich. Second was Chiraco Rob, and third was Rich and Miserable. What a name. Patent leather is drawing off willingly. All right, picking things up with race nine from the Liberty Bell series right here at Harris, Philadelphia. The three year old Colt and Geldings Trotters, Division two of three. Patent Leather, I like the name, was the favorite. And Temp Tietrich takes Patent Leather to the finish. Winning in 154, this horse winning by an incredible seven lengths. They come to the top of the stretch. Speak Club on the inside. Toast of Lindy on the grind. Three wide hill of a horse. In the final of the three divisions for the three year old Colt and Gelding Trotters, the favorite was Lindy's Big Bang. But after he went off stride early, it was actually a different Lindy getting the job done. And that was Toast of Lindy with driver Andy Miller in 156 and 1, winning for his wife and trainer, Julie Miller. For one of my favorite segments, Blast from the Past. We're taking you back to 2013 from the TVG Free for All from the Meadowlands, and this features the one and only Foiled Again. And Golden Receiver still rolling pretty good with a length and a half advantage. Pat Rock is fourth. Captain Treacherous is going to follow him. He's racing in fifth as they near the half mile marker. Pat Rock takes to the outside, and Captain Treacherous grabs his cover. Modern Legend is third over. He's sixth on the outside. Sweet Lou is seventh, a half and 53 and one. Laura Winiti dives to the inside in some heavy traffic. Then it's Better's Edge losing touch with the field, and Dynamic Youth is far behind. And Foiled again leads the way. Pat Rock working first over, half a length back. And Captain Treacherous, he looms the danger, perfectly positioned second over. Toward the inside is Golden Receiver as they head around the far turn. Both the door locked in. Modern Legend toward the outside. They reach the three-quarter marker in 122, and Foiled again's in front at the top of the stretch. Pat Rock a length and a half away on the outside. Golden Receiver third. Captain Treacherous trying to rally. Modern Legend on the far outside. It's foiled again. He's dead game. Golden Receiver is coming back. Captain Treacherous on the outside. Foiled again. Golden Receiver up the rail. Foiled again. Golden Receiver. They're slugging it out, and it's foiled again. I still am so amazed when I watch that race. I was there that night, and I've probably watched that race 30 times since then. Not only is it an epic battle with Golden Receiver down to the wire in 149 and 2, but with this win, Fueled again ends up getting over that $6 million mark in career earnings. Now, of course, we know now he's won over $7.5 million. When this race took place, he was just nine years old, almost like he was a little baby, right? Because <laughs> he is a 14 now. He is retiring at the end of the year. So how does his driver, Yannick Gingra, feel about that? We found out. Yannick, I'm going to give you one guess about what we're going to talk about. Uh, foil again, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we just watched that race from 2013, the TVG free-for-all. Wow, I love reliving it. Tell me about that race. 
Yeah, there's definitely four or five races I think that stand out in his career, in my book anyway, that, uh, you know, maybe you didn't expect it or, you know, things like that. But TVG is definitely one of them. Um, I think he was dead game that day. And, uh, you know, it's a race that uh, I'll never forget. And, you know, the Breeders' Crown is coming back around at Pocono, and he's going to be there for a meet and greet, and he won a Breeders' Crown there. And that was also, I believe, in 2013. How about that race? That's my favorite race ever, I think, for, even for myself as a driver. Uh, but as far as he goes, you know what I mean? Like, I have chills right now even talking about it. They, um, he, he just That's the definition of his life, his career, you know what I mean? Refuse to lose. Uh, you know, you think he's getting beat from everywhere, you know? And uh, he just, like I said, refused to lose, put his neck, neck up, like his nose up, not even a neck. And... Uh, it was a tremendous race, and that one I will definitely never forget. We're only a few more months away from him retiring. I'm just going to tell you, I don't own a piece of him. I've never even sat behind him jogging, and I have found myself crying thinking about watching him, like, being retired. How do you feel? How are you handling it? <laughs> uh, it's no fun, no doubt. You know, I mean... Uh, you know, in one way, you do want him to retire, enjoy. Uh, I mean, uh, he still likes the racing part of it, but you know, still he's not the the, the horse he used to be. And um, you know, in one way, I do like to see him in the pasture or something, or even maybe training the babies or something. Like I think he'd like to stay. In, no, I don't know what they, their plans is with him. I'm sure he's going to get turned out forever. But um, you know, but the part of it, no doubt. Every time I get on the racetrack, you know, when I won the race here for 100, that was uh, really emotional because uh, I don't know if I'll ever get to race uh, to win with him again. You know, what I mean. Uh, uh, so every time, every ch last chance I get to, to sit behind him, they're definitely a special moment, no doubt. Yeah, that 100th career win right here at Harris, Philadelphia. And I love the thought of Fueled again, actually helping teach the babies, the yearlings, what to do, right? That's kind of cool. You know, that's something maybe like... Uh, you know, see so how he takes the retirement part of it. You know, he's a horse that uh, likes his job, likes to be on the track and all that. So, uh, you know, I'm sh like I said, I'm sure plan A is definitely to send him to, um, you know, Barbara Matthews and let, let him be, be turned out for you know, forever. But uh, maybe if that don't work out, that's something maybe I could see him do. You know, uh, uh, he, he did uh, enjoy his, uh, his, uh, his racing career, no doubt about it. I think he's a horse that loves to be on the racetrack. In case you haven't heard, there's a big night coming up. October 27th, the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, the Breeders' Crown. 12 races, a huge night, and of course, the one thing Heather's really looking forward to, a meet and greet with the one and only Foiled Again. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, Foiled Again did win a Breeders' Crown at Pocono in 2013. He will not be competing on October 27th, but bigger things for the fans, okay? <laughs> it's going to be a meet and greet. He'll be doing a post parade and then having like a portable stall set up so you can go over and take a selfie with him. Mm -hmm. So for a minimum donation of $5 that goes to Harness Horse Youth Foundation, which is an amazing yeah. charity, you have a once in a lifetime opportunity to meet this horse. Like this will not happen again, okay? <laughs> I'm just telling you all that. Uh, and on top of that, you get a totally adorable foiled again stuffed animal. Mm -hmm. So how do you beat that? You can't. You can't. You no. can't beat that. So mark it down on your calendars. October 27th, the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. Be there. We do have to take a quick break, but when we come right back, we'll tell you what's trending in the world of harness racing. At Mohegan Sun Pocono, the colors shine a little brighter. The meals are just a little tastier and the slots a little hotter. When you're here with great friends, the good times seem to last a little longer. And you just may feel a little luckier. Best of all, it's all a little closer, so you can shine on anytime you like. Shine on, Mohegan Sun Pocono. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, changing lives since 1976 by providing unforgettable experiences while educating young racing fans. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, hands-on equine learning at camps across the country and driving exhibitions. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, providing scholarships, leadership programs, career and college information. Support the Harness Horse Youth Foundation. Log on to hhyf.org and find us on Facebook. The Harness Horse Youth Foundation, growing our future with enthusiasm.
Welcome back to PA Harness Week. In the something you don't see too often category, Eric Carlson made some lucky race fans very, very happy on September 5th right here at Harris, Philadelphia. Yes, he did. First of all, he wins with a horse named Bold Goddess and pays $116. And then in the very next race, he wins again. All right, so two wins in a row. Yeah, but with this horse, Rentier, he pays $81, right? And the Eric Carlson fans go wild. <laughs>like to keep you up to date on what's going on in the world of social media and, and what's trending. And Heather has been looking up a few things that we just have to share with you. I have a couple of counts that I am really excited about this week. First of all, let me tell you about from Facebook. It's the page for the U.S. Army Quezon Platoon. They are located in Virginia. They use horses for special ceremonies and funerals. Now they have all kinds of different breeds, including a retired standard red racehorse. His name is Sergeant York. He's the riderless horse and he is very, very famous. Now, going on to Twitter, you got to follow Dr. Patty Hogan. She's an equine surgeon. She specializes in racehorses. She's the doctor to the stars. She was the one who saved Smarty Jones's eye, who went on to win the Kentucky Derby. She operated on Always Be Mickey, the fastest harness horse of all time. Her account's full of really great pictures and behind the scenes stuff you just don't see other places. So, you got to put her on your to do list. Follow her on Twitter. And speaking of Twitter, you should also be following us at PA Harness Week, and you can also find us on online at harnessweek.com. We're really everywhere online that you should be as well. And we hate to say it, but it is time to end our last show of the season. But again, as we mentioned earlier, it's our 300th episode. Not a lot of shows can go 300 episodes. That's 300 episodes over 10 years. It's been quite the pleasure and quite the privilege. Yeah, and so much fun. That's why it went so fast, right? Yeah. But, you know, just because this is the end of our season, we're active during the fall. We're active during the winter until we come back in the spring. And if you're really missing us, you can see us on YouTube because we have every single show of PA Harness Week all the way going back 10 years ago. Yeah, a decade. I wonder what we looked like a decade ago. I don't know, but it, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not go we'll there. Leave that to the viewers. You you guys can check us out on YouTube. I might save that blast from the past uh, for another day, another time. But we definitely want you binge watching on top of that while we're taking this little hiatus until we come back in 2019. We want you following us and liking our stuff on social media and going to harnessweek.com and getting on the email list. I have a really good reason. We've got prizes. We've got prizes. Okay, so a lucky winner could end up with an autographed a foiled again briar. You know I'm not leaving the show without talking about foiled again. <laughs> she had to bring it up one more time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure you keep um, looking us up on social mm -hmm. media. So we do have to say goodbye. Thanks so much for watching. It's been a great 2018 season. As Heather mentioned, we will be back again in 2019. For us here on PA Harness Week, we hope you have a great fall, a great winter, and join us again next summer.